MCQs. Classified MCQs related to first topic 1.1, physical quantities and the measurement. The first one, which is the most suitable measuring instrument for the thickness. So 15 centimeter scale, it can measure 0 0.1 centimeter accurately. A balance cannot be used to measure the length. A meter rule can measure maximum 100 centimeter with a minimum value of 0.1 and a micrometer is 0 0.01 millimeter. So the most accurate is the micrometer screw guards. In question two, for which one of the following state uh, measurement would a micrometer screw guards is most suitable? So if you want to measure using a micrometer screw guards, it should be a small value. Diameter of an atom it's a very small value can micrometer cannot measure that length of the pencil or a page so it will be difficult to use a micrometer for small values measure so that's why diameter of the wire the thickness of the wire the micrometer is more accurate length of the page we can use a scale a ruler length of the pencil also we can use a scale Diameter of an atom, we cannot use a ruler or even a micrometer is not suitable. So diameter of the wire can be measured accurately by using a micrometer. Question three, the diagram shows an enlarged drawing of the end of a meter root. It is being used to measure the length of a small feather. What is the length of this feather? So it's not starting from zero, it's starting from 10 millimeter. So if it's starting from 10 millimeter and the other end is at 29 millimeters, so how long this feather is starting from 10 and ending at 29, so it means it is 19 millimeter long. That's why A is the right answer. The diameter of a copper wire is thought to be approximately 0.3 millimeter. So if you want to measure a small value or a thickness of a wire or a diameter of a sphere, then a micrometer screw gauge is the most suitable. A measuring tape can measure 0.1 centimeter accurately as possible, or you can also say one millimeter. A meter rule also 0.1 centimeter or one millimeter. A, rule, a ruler 0.1 centimeter or one millimeter. Measuring tape for a several meters, if you want to measure a length uh, more than meter, then we can use a measuring tape. If we want to measure a length less than a meter, we use a meter rule. And if we want to measure a length like 15 centimeter or 30 centimeter, we can use a ruler. So micrometer screw guards can be used in this case, which is which can measure accurately to 0 0.01 millimeter. Which value uh, which is the value of a vector quantity? A vector quantity has a magnitude, unit, and direction. So which quantity has a magnitude? Magnitude means number. Unit, the like example, unit of um, speed or velocity here, meter per second, and the direction is east. So all the three variables are there. That's why this is refers to a vector quantity. If it was written, as you can see, option A, it has a magnitude, means the number is their unit. Option B, magnitude and unit. Option C, magnitude and unit, but no direction. If a quantity, a physical quantity is a vector quantity, it should have a direction as well. Which piece of the apparatus is most suitable for measuring the mass of a pencil sharpener? So if you want to measure the mass, a measuring cylinder can be used to measure the volume. A Newton meter is measure, used to measure the weight. A ruler is used to measure the length. That's why the digital balance is accurate. It can measure the mass. Which is a vector quantity? A vector quantity has a magnitude unit as well as direction. A density does not, is a scalar quantity, does not have a direction. Mass does not have a direction, pressure even. As we discussed today about the pressure, pressure is force acting on unit area, but we don't say 
pressure downward pressure upward pressure we don't specify a direction that's why pressure is also refers to a scalar quantity weight is a vector quantity because weight is always directed towards the center or if we have an object we say the weight is acting downwards In question eight, which vector diagram correctly shows the force Z as a resultant of X and Y? So the resultant moment is, scalar. moment is as vector quantity. Moment, momentum, both are vector. Okay. Moment is either a clockwise or anti-clockwise, and momentum is like the product of mass and velocity. Both are refers to vector quantities. In question eight. Which vector diagram shows the force Z as a resultant? Look, if Z is a resultant, if we add X, we draw X and Y. So when we draw <coughs> from tail of the first to the head of the last, that will be the resultant. So if we join from tail of the first to the head of the last, that will be Z. So which is the right option when we check here? And there are two ways to get the vector resultant. One is a triangle method. Another one is a parallelogram. In a parallelogram, like the diagonal should be the resultant. So if X was acting like this and Y was horizontal, so the, the diagonal will be the resultant. Means the Z, if Z is the resultant, so how it should act? It should act in this direction to be a resultant. But in this case, so it is wrong. Because if this is X and Y, so Z, to be a resultant, it should act in this direction. In this case also, X is there, Y is there, so Z should be in this direction. When we draw X and then Y, so the, what about the resultant from the tail of the first to the head of the last? So Z should be pointing in this direction. The direction of a Z is wrong. Here we draw X and then Y. So from tail of the first to the head of the last, that will be the resultant of the vector. Is it uh, clear? Shouldn't the uh, resultant also be like started between X and Y, C and D? Resultant should be between X and Y. Look, no, X and Y. Like you did in A and B. Yeah, because. A diagonal. Yeah, di because when we start both vectors from the same points, like X is starting from this point and Y is starting from the same point. So when the two vectors start from the same point, then the resultant is a diagonal. But if you see what is the difference between option C and D, that first we have a vector X, then we have a vector Y. They're not starting from the same point. First X is there and yeah. then the Y is there. Now in that case, the resultant is always from tail of the first to the head of the last, that will be the resultant. This is a triangle method. So there are two ways to work out the resultant of the two vectors. One is the triangle method. Another one is a parallelogram. If it's a parallelogram method, both vectors should start from the same point. Like in option A and B, both vectors are starting from same point and the diagonal yeah. represent the resultant. But in C and D, it's a triangle method. So in a triangle method, the resultant is from tail of the first to the head of the last. Is it uh, clear? Yeah. In question nine, which list contain two scalar and two vectors quantities? Distance is a scalar, speed, scalar, time, scalar, velocity, vector. So it has three scalar and one vector. What about option B? Force, vector, velocity, vector, distance, scalar, mass, scalar. What about option C? So B is the right answer, but what about C? Mass, scalar, energy, scalar, temperature, scalar, momentum, vector. Weight, vector, acceleration, vector, momentum, vector, and speed, scalar. So option D has three vectors and one scalar.
question 10 which measuring device are most suitable to determine the length of the swimming pool so length of the swimming pool is like more than a meter so for that we need a measuring tape and thickness of the aluminium foil aluminium foil is thin so we can use more accurate instrument which is a micrometer so if we check a ruler it can only measure like 30 centimeter or 15 even a measuring cylinder is written it's used to measure the volume not the thickness tape measure or a measuring tape and a micrometer is two gods tape measure and a ruler no ruler wrong micrometer right so option b has uh, both correct options because if you want to measure several meters we prefer to use a measuring tape or a tape measure you can also say and if you want to measure the small thickness as accurately as possible then a micrometer screw box question 11 a student investigates a pendulum he measures the time for 20 oscillations and he repeats the experiments as shown what is the average but average for the period so first we what is missing here first we need a period here like time period time period means time for one oscillation this is a time for 20 oscillation how to get the time for one oscillation so 17.6 divided by 20 what's the answer for this 17.6 divided by 20 what's the answer yes hamid saim 17.6 divided by 20 yes what sorry 0.88 so 0 0.88 then 19.8 divided by 20 0 0.99 0 0.99 then 17.6 divided by 20, again we get 0 0.88. 0 0.88. Then 18.6 divided by 20. 0 0.93. 0 0.93. But in the question, we need average. How to get the average? Average is a sum divided by the total number. So sum, it will be 0 0.88 plus 0 0.99 plus 0 0.88 plus 0 0.93 and divided by the total number, which is 4. 0 0.92. 0 0.92. So B will be the right answer. So what we have to do, because the, this time for 20 oscillation is given, but we need for one oscillation. That's why we divide by the total number of oscillations. And then we need an average. So how to get an average? So average is a sum divided by the number of the values, how many values we have. So sum divided by four values we have. So divided by four, we get average, which is 0 0.92. So this was uh, topic 1.1, MCQs from this topic.